Now that was an epic video intro. So remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below of any other ideas or comments or questions that you may have about this video. So what are we actually gonna be talking about today? It's gonna to be a lot. We're gonna be going over a timeline of the events that affected Peru, a timeline of the events that affected Brazil, and all of the exports and imports that Brazil and Peru partake in, so we can see how that's gonna affect US stock markets and European stock markets. So strap in, this video is gonna be a lot of information and it's gonna be coming at you full speed. Enjoy. Okay, so just to go over a brief timeline of what's actually going on in Peru right now. December 7th, right before President Pedro Castillo's third impeachment hearing, he attempts to dissolve Congress and install an emergency government in which he could rule by decree. The government and military do not support him in this action, and he's impeached. He then tries to escape to the Mexican embassy, but like many commuters, he gets stuck in traffic and then detained by authorities and charged with rebellion and conspiracy. Dina Bolerte then gets sworn in as president. She was his vice president. Upon the arrest of Castillo, the supporters of him begin rioting and protesting throughout the country. December 11th, the protests grow more hostile in Arequipa, Cusco, and Lima. December 12th, Dina Bolarte suggests moving elections forward by two years. At this point, a number of pro-Castillo supporters and protesters have been killed by the police. Argentina, Bolivia, Colombia, and Mexico released joint statements regarding the removal of the Castillo government. None of these countries recognize Bolarte as the true president. Arequipa's airport is then shut down and overrun by Castillo supporters. Castillo then writes a letter from jail, presumably, to the Peruvian people, which he calls Bolarte a usurper. December 14th, Bolarte suggests snap elections move forward earlier than planned in December of 2023. She then also declares a national 30-day state of emergency. December 15th, Castillo is sentenced to 18 months detention for rebellion and conspiracy. Castillo blames foreign powers of coordinating to remove him from office. December 16th, Congress rejects the snap election proposal and ministers begin resigning from Belerte's cabinet. The death toll reaches 24. December 19th, polls find that 63% of Peruvians disagreed with Castillo's actions, but in rural areas, only 40% disagreed. December 20th, Mexico grants Castillo's family asylum. The Congress agrees to advance general elections to April 23rd of 2024, but a second vote is required to confirm that these elections can take place due to it being a constitutional amendment. That second vote will take place in February of 2023. Peru then also kicks out Mexico's ambassador, presumably for granting uh, asylum to Castillo's family. Currently, there's still protests across the country. Rural protesters are disrupting rail networks and attempting to disrupt airport networks. This is severely delaying transportation of mined materials, one of Peru's chief exports. Okay, so things are looking pretty much out of control in Peru, but what's going on in Brazil? That's an even bigger country and a bigger economy and arguably more important for the U.S. So the timeline of events in Brazil are a little bit different. October 30th, Luiz Ignacio Lula da Silva, also known just as Lula, defeats J.R. Bolsonaro in an election. Bolsonaro's supporters begin gathering near military bases, calling for the military to prevent Lula from assuming office, a.k.a. calling for a coup. Truckers who support Bolsonaro block roads all around the country, causing commerce to halt. November 22nd, Bolsonaro challenges the results of the election, but the election authorities ignored the challenges and said they were illegitimate. December 12th, Lula's election is certified and the pro-Bolsonaro indigenous leaders are arrested. Bolsonaro supporters try to invade the federal police headquarters. December 24th, a man is arrested for attempting to set up a bomb in protest of the results. He was also attempting to arm civilians and supporters of Bolsonaro in an attempt to overthrow the government, also known as a coup. December 30th, Bolsonaro travels to Florida 
probably to get the heck out of Dodge, to be honest. And January 1st, Lula is sworn in as the president of Brazil. And on January 8th, Bolsonaro supporters occupy the presidential palace, Congress, and the Supreme Court. A lot of people are comparing that to the January 6th riots that took place in the U.S. Capitol. But let's see what's actually happening here. Do these things really matter for the global economy? Let's find out next. Hey, before we get into the investment impacts of these events that are occurring in Peru and Brazil, please, if you're enjoying the video, remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below of any questions you might have or any other video ideas that you might have. I respond to every single question and I frequently make videos based upon what people ask me to make. So thank you and enjoy the rest of the video. Okay, let's start off with Peru because that's the smaller economy. So we should take a look at that one first because Brazil might be a bigger impact. Let's go right over to the graphic of Peru's economy. Okay, so what we can see here is that Peru is primarily an export economy. That means that they don't have many finished goods that they're sending out, but rather they're sending out raw materials. Most notably is copper ore, which is an industrial material used in almost everything on earth. So that is a very big factor in their economy and disruptions to the mining of copper ore can severely impact commodity prices, which if commodity prices rise, then prices of finished goods also rise because the base materials are more expensive. So this could be an impact to inflation. But how much is it compared to the rest of the world in terms of the export amount? Let's take a look. Uh-oh, so if we take a look at this, we see that Peru is actually the second largest exporter of copper in the world, just behind Chile. So this means that a disruption to the supply of copper from Peru would provide a significant impact to the global copper supplies. So what can we expect as sophisticated investors that have grown our knowledge to understand the economy of Peru? Well, we can expect copper prices to rise if the instability in Peru continues. Additionally, we can expect finished goods that use significant amounts of copper to also rise in price if Peru's copper production is disrupted. This could mean inflationary pressures for finished goods that use large amounts of copper, such as electric motors, turbines, etc., and additionally, increases to inflation related to commodities prices. So anything related to the copper production um, may also increase in price. So this could be an inflationary pressure upwards for things related to copper if the conditions in Peru continue to worsen. And there are those elections that are coming up. If you refer back to the timeline, you can see when those snap election decisions are going to be made. So you can monitor those decision-making processes of the Peruvian Congress and determine if there's going to be a big risk and a big upside to copper suppliers that are not from Peru. So take a look and see what you can find out. Okay, next up we have the economy of Brazil. So let's take a look at that little graphic and see what Brazil is producing and what they make. Okay, what we see almost immediately about Brazil's economy is that, is that it has significantly more products that they are exporting and producing. This is because Brazil is considered a mixed economy. So that means that they're not just producing raw materials, they're also producing finished goods and processed materials. Like you can see there, there's different meat products, different food products, as well as different processed materials. So um, different alloys and things like that that involve a little bit more advanced industrialization than Peru has. But we do want to check to see if Brazil is a major supplier of any one good uh, across the globe because we can see there if a disruption to Brazil's economy and political environment can actually impact the supply of any one good. So what we see actually is that Brazil is producing a large amount of the world's iron supply. Approximately 19% of the world's exports of iron come from Brazil. So this means that a disruption would impact the iron supply, which is the raw material that's used to make steel and other metal products. So if iron is disrupted, the price of steel products and steel goods usually rises. So that could be an area where we will see inflation related to the increase in prices of iron due to supply disruptions from Brazil. Okay, so what did we learn? 
we learned the timeline of events that occurred in Peru and Brazil uh, in terms of the political instability that was going on there, as well as some of the events that happened in those political instability that have disrupted the supplies of raw materials and mined goods. Then we also learned about the economies of Peru and Brazil, that Peru supplies a large amount of the world's copper supply and Brazil supplies a large amount of the world's iron supply. So what we can determine is that if there are disruptions and continued political unrest in these countries, not only could that political unrest spread to other countries within South America, such as Chile, which is another large supplier of copper, but those interruptions can severely impact the production of both copper and iron, which are two base materials that are frequently used in a lot of products. So as a sophisticated investor, what do we now know? We know that if problems continue in Brazil and Peru, the price of copper and the price of iron is likely to rise and we can make investment decisions based upon that information. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope that you like and subscribe and also check out any of the other videos on this channel. Thank you and have a nice day. Bye.